All right. This should be the last video I do. And I'm going to talk about when radicals are in the denominator. So basically when we're dividing radicals. Okay. And I hope to make this as simple as possible. Um, I'm going to make up a couple of things. Um, here's one we could do. How about the square root of 12 divided by the square root of 6? Because both of these numbers are under a radical, you can treat it just like this. You can actually put them together as one fraction under one radical and then simplify accordingly. Okay? You could do um, the square root of... 14 divided by the square root of 2. Um, it's it, That would be the square root of 7. So if they're both under a radical, you can, you can divide them. If they're both, if numbers are not under a radical and they're across the fraction bar, you can, you can cancel them out as well. Okay, so what if they don't divide? So let's do kind of a simple one, like square root of 5 over the square root of 3. Clearly, 5 cannot be divided by 3, and you're not going to get a whole number answer out of that. But you know what? You can't leave that radical in the denominator. That's a rule. That's a big rule when you're dividing radicals. Never leave a radical in the denominator. It's not simplified. It's kind of like, oh, I'm leaving 2 fourths, and I don't change it to 1 half. It's not simplified. So this is how you handle that. With monomial radicals, you're just going to multiply top and bottom by the radical that's in the denominator. Okay? So we'll multiply straight across the top here. That's the square root of 15. We'll multiply straight across the bottom. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. See? No more radical. And I can't divide those. There's my answer. Let's try another one. Let's do the square root of 7 divided by the square root of 2. Well, 7 can't be divided by 2. You're not going to get an even number there, okay? You're not going to get a whole number answer like we did in the first two. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by the denominator. And so we're going to end up with the square root of 14 over, and remember, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2. And that's all I can do there. Let me go to another page. Let's do where maybe the numerator is a plain old number, okay? It's not a radical, but the denominator is a radical. All right, well, we cannot leave that square root of 2 in the denominator. So you're going to have to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. And so across the top, you're just going to get 2 times the square root of 2, and then the bottom, square root of 2 times the square root of 2, remember, that's the square root of 4, which is very simply 2. Now, as you look at this fraction, you've got this 2 that's outside of the radical, this 2 is outside the radical, and you can cancel them out. That's the cool thing. And you're left with the square root of 2. And that's as simple as you can get it. Okay? So let me do one more like that just to make sure we've got this. How about the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 5? I mean, just 3 divided by the square root of 5. Okay, um, that square root of 5 cannot stay in the denominator. So you're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 5. So that means the top becomes 3 times the square root of 5. And the bottom becomes the square root of 25, which is 5. Notice the 3 and the 5, they don't reduce each other. So you're stuck with these. That's as good as you can get it. It can't be reduced any more than that. Okay, now let's, let's get a little bit more complicated. In video 3, I showed you exactly how to handle conjugates. What would happen when you multiply two binomials together? Okay, so this actually came off of an IXL question. Okay, and here it is. Now, 
most students think, oh, the square root's of five. I'm just going to cancel them out. You can't do that, okay? You could do that if this was four times the square root of five, you could do that all day long and you'd have the answer one fourth. You could do that. That you can do. This you cannot. Okay. Um, anytime you're working across a fraction bar and you see an addition or subtraction sign, you got to treat this whole thing as one unit. Either all of it stays or all of it goes. All for one and one for all, okay? Think three musketeers, okay? So when it's a binomial like that, it's all for one or one for all. They either it all stays or it all goes, okay? Well, the only way I can get that radical out of the denominator is if, remember that word I showed you? If I multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, that conjugate. So think about it with me for just a second. What would be the conjugate of 4 plus the square root of 5? And if you're going, oh, I remember. It's 4 minus the square root of 5. You're exactly right. And that's what we're going to multiply top and bottom by. Now, what happens up top is you have a distributive situation. And so you are going to distribute the square root of 5 times 4 and then you've got the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Well, that's the square root of 25, which is 5. And so there's your numerator. Now, your, den your denominator, that's a radical times, that's a binomial times a binomial. But with conjugates, there's a shortcut. Remember, we talked about, hey, we already know outer and inner are going to cancel. We're just going to do first and last. So we'll do... Let me rewrite it real quick, and then we'll do the first and last, okay? So, 4 times 4 is 16, and the square root of 5 times negative square root of 5 is 5, and 16 minus 5 is 11. And that's as good as I can get right there. I really, there's just really no other option to simplify in that. Okay, there's just nothing else I can do. So let's try another one. Let's see if I can come up with, with one. I'll do kind of a simple top. I'll do 2 over 1 plus the square root of 3. Okay, so you're given this problem. You have this binomial that has a radical in the denominator. And you're like, oh, it's so annoying. I got a binomial and I got to get rid of that radical. You can't get rid of that radical the way you would if it were a, just a plain old monomial, okay? The simple, if it was just 2 over the square root of 3, you'd go, oh, that's simple. Just multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3, and okay, I'm done, okay? And there you are. It's not that simple over here. You have to multiply top and bottom because it's a binomial. You're going to have to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. And you have to remember that the conjugate is exactly what you see, but with a different sign in the middle. So that's going to create up top here, that's going to create um, a situation where we're going to distribute the 2. And we're going to end up with 2 minus 2 times the square root of 3. And then we're going to end up down here on the bottom... We know we're doing a binomial times a binomial, but there's a shortcut here if you're multiplying conjugates. You can do FLA, first and last. 1 times 1 is 1. Positive square root of 3 times negative square root of 3 is 3. And so you've got 2 minus 2 times square root of 3 over negative 2. Now, this is an interesting situation. If I had not distributed this... Let me have, leave it undistributed for just a second. Look what happens. I can cancel 2 and negative 2. I can reduce those and make it negative 1 minus the square root of 3. Or negative, distribute it, negative 1 plus the square root of 3. I can do it either way. Negative sign out in front. 
of a set of parentheses with 1 minus the square root of 3 in it, or go ahead and distribute it, make it negative 1 plus the square root of 3. That's a little bit hard to understand, so I, I'll just try and do another one, try and emulate that as much as I can. I'm right at the 10 minute mark, so I'll go over just a little bit, just to make sure you've got this. So I've got 5 over, let's do 2 minus the square root of 5, okay? So I am going to have to, because it's a binomial, I have to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. And the conjugate is exactly what you see, except the sign in the middle is different. So up top, I have a distributive situation. So what we might want to do is learn from our last lesson. Well, maybe let's not distribute yet. If we need to distribute, we can do it later. If we leave it undistributed for right now, we may be able to cancel some stuff out, which is cool. Okay. So we're going to leave it undistributed, and then we're going to do FLA on this line. So 2 times 2 is 4, and negative square root of 5 times positive square root of 5 is just 5. So it's 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. Okay. I, I certainly, I mean, you could leave your answer like that. If I just have a negative 1 in the denominator, I normally just pop it up to the top and make it negative 5 times the quantity 2 plus the square root of 5. And then you can distribute that if you like. And there you go. There's your very, very best answer here. Not bad. That's actually really good. This is probably the very, very best answer you can give. This is okay. I'm, I'm not sure as an algebra teacher and geometry teacher that I really want you leaving that negative one there. I don't like that. If you just have a negative one in the denominator, just pop it up to the top so you don't have a fraction anymore. That's really the best way to handle that. Okay, that is all I've got for you. I hope I've helped you figure out these, these weird radicals and that it makes sense. All right, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call. Love you guys.